Welcome to Lightwave. This is Lightwave Modeler. You will have noticed upon obtaining the software and hopefully obtaining it legally that Lightwave is divided into two programs, Modeler, which you use to, yeah, model, and Layout, which you use for layout, uh, animation, and rendering. So we're going to start in Modeler because that's where the process begins, the modeling phase. It'll also give us an opportunity to familiarize ourselves with what's going on in Lightwave. Uh, at the top left is a chunk of buttons, File, Edit, Windows, Help, Surface Editor, Image Editor, and potentially Select, depending on your version of Lightwave. Those are the only things that are going to be here the whole time. Uh, everything else is going to move around. File is obviously, you know, open, save, that kind of thing. Edits where your preferences are. Don't go in there that often. Windows is kind of useful because the windows in Windows are things like the, you know, vertex maps and layer maps and, and, and statistics. And, and Windows you'll eventually want to use uh, quite a bit. Uh, surface Editor and Image Editor we'll get to later. Now, these things along the top here are categories. They're basically toolboxes. And in each one of them, you will get a different set of buttons on the left side, tools. In Create, you have things like primitives, text, points, polygons, and curves, you know, things that you create. And then going along the right, it gets more and more complicated. Modify for things like move, rotate, scale. Multiply for more complicated things like adding bevels or extrusions, uh, which we'll get to and they're fun, uh, or, you know, mirror and, and things like that, cloning. Uh, construct is more utilitarian. Stuff like reduce points and reduce polys are for limiting down detail that you've added into a model after the fact. You should actually, you know, model smart and not need to go back through and do reduce points later, but if you need to, it's there. It doesn't work perfectly, but it's there. It's also, um, construct is where we get stuff like boolean, which is really fun. We're going to get there later, but that's how you, like, drill holes and stuff. Uh, it's pretty useful. Detail, map, setup, not going to use so much in these, in these tutorials at least. Uh, they're more a little bit more advanced and nothing really in there that you're going to need to play with for at least a little while here. Although I leave utilities out of that list just because in case you end up running an L script or adding a plugin, they're all going to happen in utilities. Selection is very handy. That's where you're going to use all your smart selection tools to select large portions of things or groups or select loops and all that stuff. We'll get to it later. View and input output are, you know, not so much. Although I bring up input output only to say that Lightwave users use Lightwave objects and Lightwave scenes. That is the extension .lwo and .lws. Lightwave and many other 3D programs can deal in the .obj format, which is short for or object, uh, for object. Most 3D software can open objects, so it's sort of the, you know, O type blood of all 3D software, but you're going to be wanting uh, Lightwave objects on your end, at least for now, because there are some limitations to OBJ in Lightwave. Um, but just so you know, you can bring in and export objects in .obj, or if you go to TurboSquid to get a model from their giant online repository of online models, uh, downloading a LWO or an OBJ will both open fine. Uh, over here in the Create tab, let's um, real quickly just make a box so I can show you a couple other things here. So what we're looking at here is the viewport. Uh, this is the main area through which you'll be looking at your work in Lightwave. Modeler or layout, you'll be looking at this giant open space. And um, there are several ways of looking at a thing. For instance, you know, instead of making a box, let's go ahead and make a gear. A gear will make more sense here. We can look at this gear from the front by clicking front or from the back, which is going to look the same in this case, but also like right or left and also top or bottom. Uh, these are the orthogonal views. They are schematic blueprint views that have absolutely no perspective to them. And there's also perspective, which you can use to look at it in 3D. Pretty handy stuff here. Now, the 3D world that you're looking at it in here is um, sometimes a little bit misleading. You might be making the wrong er edits here, there, everywhere. So it's actually handy to either go back and forth between perspective and orthogonal constantly, or by clicking the D button, uh, switching your layout over to double vertical or basically any other configuration of windows. That way, over here, you know, you can have perspective view and over here you can be looking at just the front. So whenever you make an edit in, um, you know, over here, you can actually see the edit happening in both windows at once to make sure that you're working, you know, correctly. At the top right of any particular viewport window is this little button that looks like a page being turned. That allows you to maximize or unmaximize virtually any window. Depending on how many things you got, uh, you might end up spending a lot of time clicking that button. Adjacent to that button are three others. There's a magnifying glass, which if you click on it and scroll, or not scroll, but you know, click and drag, you get to zoom with the magnifying glass. With the uh, far left button, there's a cross bow of arrows here. That allows you to sort of pan, drag around, and the uh, twirly cue kind of arrows going in a circle lets you rotate. 
Now, obviously, you can't rotate in an orthogonal view. All you can do is kind of pan around and zoom because there is no rotation to be had. But all of these things have hotkeys. In perspective mode, holding down Alt and clicking and dragging will spin it around. In the other modes, holding down Alt and clicking and dragging will pan. And, you know, Alt Control will zoom, Alt Shift, etc. But Alt is the, the main one for anything. So there's that. Now there's also a separate way of thinking about these things, in addition to just what angle you're looking at them from. And speaking of angles real quick, back in D, where you had your layout options, in perspective, you can also skew your perspective amount, which doesn't make any change to the geometry at all. It's just basically changing the way that the camera focal length is working. Uh, the field of view, basically taking it from like a, you know, 600 millimeter lens to a 12 millimeter lens. Whatever. Cool stuff. Um, what we're looking at here is a object in wireframe. This is actually all that exists in your file. Uh, it's a series of points with a series of edges connecting them, and between all those edges and points, polygons will be drawn. But you can look at it in wireframe mode by, you know, looking at it in wireframe mode. All of these other modes do fancy other things. We're going to kind of blast through them, but color wireframe allows you to, if you wish, you can actually change the color of different portions of the wireframe so it's easier to distinguish parts. Um, hidden line basically hides anything that would be behind the polygons if you could see the polygons. So, you know, you can only see the forward facing wires. Sketch, more utilitarian, you're not going to need that very often. Wireframe shade is giving you the whole wireframe. In addition, in addition it's also drawing in the polygon. Um, so you can actually see the polygon occluding the other stuff and get a good sense of what it is you're actually modeling. Flat shade is uh, basically the exact same thing as wireframe shade, only it is, uh, well, you know, no wireframe. Now you can see inside this thing, you can see the individual, um, you can see the individual polygons going back on the inside of the gear. Uh, in flat shade, you're actually looking at an accurate representation of your model. If you have anything turned on with smoothing, Smooth shade will actually smooth them out. See right here, it looks like it's more high res and smoother. It's actually not. It's a trick, and we'll talk about smoothing later, but that's what smooth shade does. Uh, weight shade is another utilitarian one. It's used for setting up weight maps that you'll use in Lightwave or layout to do your rigging and animation to sort of affect the fall off of, you know, bone movement and stuff like that. Not going to use it very often for a while. Texture is the exact same in this case as smooth shade because it's basically just smooth shade plus whatever images that are in your textures will be visible in this mode. Since we don't have any, it's just the same as smooth shade. And finally, textured wire is texture with wire. Anyway, uh, I spend most of my time going back and forth between wireframe and smooth shade. Uh, once again, wireframe and flat shade are the most honest ones because they actually show you where the polygons are. Okay, I think we're set up here. Uh, what else? Little last things about using Lightwave before we get into the fun stuff. Again, in D, hitting D, display options, you can have uh, show grid, and uh, that'll give you a sense of where you're at in your 3D space. And when you zoom, it will change scale. Or show origin, which is just kind of the origin of the grid, the coordinate plane, just the X and the Z in this case. Uh, and one last thing about the grid before we uh, move on to the proper model. This grid here, let's create a ball. This grid here that you can see is measured down in the bottom left corner. Right now it says 500 millimeters. The 500 millimeters refers to each individual square. Each individual square in this grid is 500 millimeters on a side. Now I'm going to zoom in. You'll notice that right now this ball is being dissected by, bisected by basically four squares. It's fitting perfectly into four squares. That is to say, it's a, it has a 500 millimeter radius, or it's exactly one meter. When I zoom in, the scale of those boxes changes, you see. And as, I, as they change, down here it says now they're 200 millimeters. Uh, that's the only, I don't know how often you're going to be paying attention to scale. Depends on what kind of a model you are. But that's how the grid works in light. As you zoom out, the box you know, automatically updates. Right now we're looking at boxes with one millimeter size, or one meter size. Okay. That's how you use Lightwave. That's how you look at and control Lightwave. Let's talk about how you model in Lightwave. See you in the next video.